Welcome to Sutton Parish for our Sunday morning service and this morning we have a passage from the Gospel of Matthew with a focus on the resolving of conflict and disagreements and uh, broken relationships and Jesus has some really um, useful teaching, quite hard to get our heads around as well though, so uh, let's be prayerful as we begin this service. Father God, we are your people and we want to do the right thing. So often we have good intentions, but we do get into difficulties. We pray that in the course of this service, you will open our hearts and minds to your ways and that you will help us to follow the teaching of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, God to, to whom all, all hearts are, are open, all, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We take a moment of quiet just to allow the things to come to mind that we're going to speak with him about. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 18, and it begins at the 15th verse. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. They listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I have the privilege of taking many weddings and in the run up to those weddings often you get couples talking to each other about how they've fallen in love and they never have a crossword for each other. Uh, I've met couples who've been married for many, many years and they said, oh yes, there's never been a harsh word between us and I'm just simply not quite so sure because when two people come together there's always a little bit of tension and a little bit of conflict. And actually, uh, one of the phrases I often use on a wedding day is that a marriage 
is the union of two forgivers. And in this passage in Matthew, we've got some really practical advice about how to, to resolve issues between fellow believers in the church. And, and I think right from the outset, it, it's obvious that these things do happen. We do fall out. And I've been in ordained ministry for 20 years now. I've been in Christian ministry for 32 years. And during that time, sadly, there's been some really difficult times. Times when people have fallen out with me and I've fallen out with them. And here, Jesus gives us some guidelines of what to do in those situations. What do we do when seemingly a brother or sister has sinned against us? And let's bear in mind that we may have sinned against them. And one of the things before we take any steps is to make sure that we've looked at ourselves. What is it that I may have done or not have done? It's really, really important. Because one of the issues in church life, I think, is that when there is tension or where there is conflict between people, two ways that are both wrong in dealing with this conflict are amnesia, uh, oh, it never happened, well, let's pretend it never happened, or absence. One of the parties leaves the room, leaves the church. And actually, that is not what Jesus is wanting. He was wanting unity and reconciliation at the end of the day. We recognise that something has happened, it, it hurt, it did matter, but it's the journey to being whole again that these instructions really speak into. And there's three stages. The first stage is very simple, we, we go to that person, we don't phone them up, we don't email them, we don't text them, we go and see them, because in the, the chemistry of being with somebody, something very, very different happens. It's confidential and it's not a win-lose scenario. We want the best for each other. And that's a real key aspect here. But it might be that we don't resolve it and we need to take somebody else with us. Now, don't take people who agree with you. Take people who are neutral, whose opinions you respect, even though they might not always be yours but they make sure there's no bias in whatever's going on. So take along one or two people that can really help you in that conversation. But if ultimately it's still unresolved, it may be that we take the whole situation to the church. Now, in my experience, this has not happened. I think it is very, very rare, but it might need to, particularly if the situation or what has happened is so serious. But if we do do that, let's recognise that the, the fallout and the damage may be immense, although the reconciliation may be perfect as well. Uh, I'll get reconciled with Bo in a minute, because obviously I've locked her out and she's a little bit upset with me. But in that passage, Jesus talks about the fact that we need to, to deal with that person as if they're a pagan or a tax collector, which seemingly suggests that we, we ignore them, we spurn them. But recognise who Jesus' friends were, the outcasts of society, the pagans, the tax collectors. It was those people that he wanted to spend time with and be reconciled with as well, to bring them home to him. So, three steps. But throughout the whole process, let's recognise that there's a lot of listening going on. Listening is mentioned three times there. There's being specific about the issue. There's explaining how we feel or what we feel has happened rather than blaming the other person. There's always wanting the best for the other person. Not that we feel that we should be always number one and right. What is the best way forward for both parties in that situation? Because ultimately God calls us into reconciliation. And my sense is that if we get this right, and we can do with God's help, it is one of the most powerful ways that we are countercultural, Because we don't give up on people. We don't, oh, we never talk about them. We are always leaving the door open for unity and reconciliation. Because that is what God is doing in our lives. 
He hasn't given up on us, however distant or far away from him we are. He welcomes us home, and in this passage there are specific steps of how we all may come home with each other as well. Amen. Lord, you are among us, even when we are few in number gathered in your name. Strengthen and bless all who meet to celebrate your sacraments and feed on your word. In your love, fulfil all that your law upholds. Amen. Lord, you are among us in disputes and agreements. Open our hearts to your reconciling grace. Heal the hurts of injuries born and evil intent. Amen. Lord, you are among us when we share food and tell our stories of your guiding presence. Encourage and sustain us in your fellowship. Come alongside us as we accompany one another on our journey of faith. Amen. Lord, you are among us in sickness and health. Teach us to see through our frailty to your loving mercy that always holds us. The clinician's skill and friends who are there, whatever befalls, we give you thanks. Amen. Lord, you are among us when tears flow and day turns to night. Gather to yourself all who have died. Bring us to the joy of the dawning new day of your resurrection. Amen.
as we come to the communion part of the service, you may want to fetch some bread at home or something to eat as we break bread and share together. And we also come to the time where we share the peace together. And it may be that today, having listened to the word and the teaching and being thoughtful about um, conflict and, and how things just get between us sometimes, and uh, this may be an opportunity to be, to be thinking about people that you might want to make peace with and hold peace and uh, value peace as so precious. And so, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share it. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our, our sins, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we, Though we are, are many, we are, are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. 
thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. This is the time to share your bread at home. Father of all, we give, give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us, us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. It has been wonderful to be with you again today and with others who will gather in the churches. Uh, we are one, though the, um, the love that stretches between us covers many, many miles. We hope that you'll have a really good and peaceful and blessed week ahead. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.